It's Wednesday, July 19th here at the West End Gun Club. I'm in the impact area of the upper range and behind me, you can probably see a couple targets. One of them's on the ground because in my infinite wisdom, I didn't bother to make sure that the target would actually fit on the target hanger or the target stand. And I'm too lazy to go back down to the rimfire container to get a different one that will work. So we're just gonna make that work for rimfire. I do have one that's hanging for center fire, but we're gonna test the, sorry, this bug's flying in my face. We're gonna test the 6.5 Creedmoor at 300 or 305. This is roughly 305 where I'm standing to the firing line. But we'll get some, just confirm some dope there. Not much, it should be about a mil or 1.1 mils uh, with 6.5 Creedmoor, but we'll just uh, double check and I have a water line on that target just to verify things. But anyway, let's go ahead and get down to the firing line, get set up, and then we can start shooting. Fire 10 rounds so far this morning, just a five at the 100 or roughly 98.3 yards, and then five more at 307. And our velocities right now is around 2692 with an SD of six. This is 42.2 grains of 4350 with the Berger 144 long range hybrid target in Alpha Munitions Brass and with CCI BR4 primers. Here's our target at 307 yards. And uh, you can see here, <clears throat> we have four impacts. One, two, three, four, plus five. I threw, I don't know where this one went, why that went high, but this is a really good, really good group. All things considering, I would say that's about a two inch group, edge to edge. And uh, I'll take a photo of it. But this is 1.1 mils. Uh, Castro said 1.15, but I went 1.1. And I was aiming right at the water at the uh, black line and it held right there. So if anything, I may need to adjust my, my windage a little bit, but it uh, looks pretty good. So uh, content with this rifle, considering this is 307 yards and I'm printing about a two inch group. So not bad. 
I don't know why I bothered to set myself up under the overhang because in the morning, the sun is coming up right above the ridge and it's just hitting us from, from, the, from an angle. So the shade doesn't really help here unless you're in the very far end. Anyway, um, while I was setting up, I have these binoculars out and some of you might've said, what are those? These are the Vortex Optics Triumph HD 10 by 42 binoculars. And if you've been following Vortex, I know a lot of people don't like Vortex. I'm a little indifferent with them because they do make some good, they make some good products, at least in the high end stuff like the razors are pretty good, but after that it just starts to fall off. And then once you get to a lot of their budget line, that's when, you know, I'm not really a fan of Vortex. But follow Vortex, they have a podcast and I heard they were talking about these new binoculars. And from what you're seeing here, you can't really tell much, but I will tell you they are $99.99. So these are $100 binoculars and they're claiming this HD um, feature as far as glass quality. And they were hyping it up in their podcast and I have actually not had a chance to try them out yet. And so I brought them to the range. I literally, I would usually go you know, at home and go out in the driveway or whatever and then start looking at stuff at distance to kind of get an idea of what stuff looks like or how it looks in the uh, in the glass. But right now I really can't see anything because of the glare. And uh, But I'm gonna go ahead and give it a whirl this morning and see how they compare. I'll probably go in the shade over there, but uh, I don't know. I bought a pair at the local Sportsman's Warehouse just to see what they're like because $100 isn't much to spend. And I wanted to know how they are. And you know, eventually I'm probably gonna junk them. But I will tell you right now, the focus knob is bad. Uh, when I was, I did pull them out of the box just to take a look at them real quick and take some photos. But when you move the knob, I was trying to focus it and just run it through its motion. And it kind of, it started chattering. I'm like, am I at the very end of it? Because on cheap binoculars or cheap optics, if you go to the very end, it starts to like stop and you can kind of force it through. I'm like, am I supposed to stop here? And I forced it through and it went over it. And so that's actually in the middle of the adjustment. I don't know if you can hear it. Actually, I have my microphone here. You might be able to hear it. Yeah, so that's that's how bad it is. Um, I'm gonna give it a, I'm gonna do some tests of it and get an idea of clarity. And then I'm probably gonna send these back to Vortex. I'd rather not return it to Sportsman's Warehouse because of this, this flaw here. And let's see what Vortex says about this chattering in the focus knob. But, I bought these Triumph HDs just to see what they're like, and there's a lot of bugs out this today because it's summertime already. Um, but just want to see what they're like. Um, obviously, I'm not. I don't think they're going to compare to these Swarovskis, but I wanted to see what you're getting with a hundred dollar binocular. I forgot to turn on my camera when I was shooting, but I did shoot a string after I put my ammo in the sun for a couple minutes, and we're looking at a little bit of increase. The ambient temperature is also increased. I think we're probably, we're pushing around 86 degrees right now in the Kestrel, 
and we are at 2704 average compared to 2692 earlier this morning. So about 12 foot per second increase in about, I would say from about 65 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Let me double check here as far as the temperatures here, yeah, 85 live. So about a 20, 20 degree difference were about 12 feet per second, which is not too bad. Quick look at the five round group that I put on this target again. I did throw one round to the right, so I did have a, made it to a three inch group, but this first impact, second impact, third, fourth, fifth. Um, it's kind of hard to see because there's some divots here from previous impacts, but you can kind of tell where the splash is at around each round. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. Um, without that one, that's a pretty good group. So less than about an inch and a half maybe, but I threw that right. I think I know why. I think I have a tendency if I grip it, the way I grip it and prone, I actually push the rifle a little bit to the right. So um, during recoil, so that was probably that.
mall done shooting I've been out here longer than you would think because I was actually recording other videos to supplement some articles that I'm going to publish. So I was recording other videos along with this range vlog. So uh, those will be out soon, specifically the write up on this build. So I'm pretty much done with that article. I'm going to probably pu publish it at the end of this week, if not next week, along with the video. But I took care of what I want to take care of today. 300 yards, 307 yards. We're on two inch groups over there at 300. I know that this rifle is shooting well. I know where the problem lies as far as me and the gun. And especially in prone, I have a tendency to want to push in a little bit with the, gun, with the grip so I can throw a shot to the right on occasion or I'll throw it up if I'm the way I'm palming it in. So I need to deal with that. I think I can, I just need more practice on that. But the gun is shooting well. I'm two inch at 300 yards, can't complain. My load is pretty much settled. 144 Burger long range hybrid targets, 42.2 grains of H4350, Alpha Munitions Brass, ECR BR4 primers. 2692 early in the morning with 65 degrees roughly. And then, sorry, this bug's flying around. Um, later in the day when I let it bake in the sun and then 85 degree ambient temperature, uh, 2704 feet per second. So I think that's pretty good. 12 feet per second with temperature swing, that's pretty decent. It's gonna be better than Stable 6.5, which we saw a 30 foot per second swing from 65 to 95 degrees ambient. So I don't like that. I wanna stick with 40 through 50. I think that's a solid load and we'll continue that in Creedmoor because that's been my load for Creedmoor, 6.5 and 6 Creedmoor, H4350. Anyway, that's it for today. I'm gonna to go, I actually need to go deposit some of the targetry back into the rimfire container and I'm gonna get out of here, run some errands on my way home. I did take the day off and I'm not gonna go back to work. <laughs> Took the day off. No, I'm not gonna attend any meetings this afternoon, so we're good. Um, this Sunday is the NRL 22 match, July 2023 20, Course of Fire. It's going to be Sunday. So if you're interested, come on out. The creek is actually not bad. So if you were looking at the Lido Creek, the USGS Creek water flow, it actually spiked to 300 cubic feet per second, which is insanely fast. And I thought it was going to be flooded when I got here this morning, but it was actually lower than, than normal. So not entirely sure why that spike did not signify any sort of increase in water flow or depth. But right now it's good. Uh, it could change come Sunday, but for anyone driving a regular like truck with street tires, you should be okay. Uh, no cars though. If you're driving a Honda Civic or a Camry, you should not be driving through there still. But any decent truck should make it. Um, anything with decent clearance should make it. But anyway, that's it for today. July, what is it, the 19th? Wednesday here at the West End Gun Club. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vlog.